Hello everyone. Welcome to the self knowledge lectures. Hello everyone. Today we have the lecture number 50, which is the last lecture of the phase A of this cycle or of the self knowledge course. And well, throughout this course, we have uh, talked a lot about what we need to work on ourselves in order to awaken our consciousness and we have talked uh, like a lot about the need of eliminating our from our interior all of our negative ways of being or, or, or psychological defects serves or psychological eyes that make up our ego because uh, as we have explained in each of the details of our ego is where that consciousness that we lack is trapped there, is conditioned in all of our concepts, beliefs, wrong ways of uh, reacting, of thinking, of feeling, of talking, of acting. There is our consciousness trapped. Knowing on, uh, ourselves implies uh, a conscious work of eliminating or of first recognizing by like self-observing ourselves all of our psychological defects and uh, eliminating from within all of them and that way we are going to free our consciousness and we are going to be able to get to know ourselves and when we use that liberated that liberated energy in the uh, spiritual birth we are going to be able to integrate our being by creating the existential bodies that will allow us to have conscious presence in the different dimensions of nature. So, as you can see, to close this cycle of the course, we are going to do so by explaining how the ego was created. Uh, what was is, uh, also the reason why the ego was created in this planet, in this cycle, in this physical manifestation, okay? So... The objective of today's lecture will be to explain at what point, at what point in our passage as divine sparks through this planet, the ego was created and to observe the different aspects that participated in the moment in which the ego was created. So we are going to delve into certain symbolism that we know, for example, um, here we find the serpent, the apple, we have heard about, for example, Adam, Eve, etc. So we are going to be delving or today in that and we are going to get to know what is the relationship uh, that, it, um, that is in that, uh, uh, in that story with the creation of the ego. Actually, that is just a symbology of something that uh, really happened, okay? And, uh, well, if you have any question, remember, you can leave your questions down there in the comment box and we'll be gladly solving any question that you have, right? So, the first thing that we must start like by understanding is that the objective for which the humanities of the different planets are created is uh, to become solar men, beings of awakened consciousness. Each planet is like a like an school to which the, the divine sparks go to make a course, okay? And each planet must host seven great races. And after this, the planet involutes and becomes uh, like a moon, okay? And uh, we are talking about a process that, of course, takes hundreds of millions of years, yes. And this planet in which we live, planet Earth, has already housed five races. We are in the fifth race of this planet. The previous four races lasted millions of years. They had their golden age, each one of them, then their silver age, then their bronze age, and finally, they have their, their iron age and at ending the iron age on a race, the, it ends like the existence of that race. Usually 
thanks to great cataplasm. And a, always a selection of that race is always kept to be the founders of or, or the pre precursors of the new race. And each race entails the appearance of seven sub-races. So we, as I was saying, are currently in the sixth sub-race of the fifth race. So we are uh, actually in the Iron Age of this race known as the Aryan race. And the ego was formed in us, I mean in this planet, in the middle of the third race that, is, that was known as the Lemur race. So we are talking about um, 8.5 million years ago until the races had been, uh, I mean, until then, until that point, the races were androgynous. Uh, the first two races, that is, they were like female and male at the same time. They have like the both sexes in them, but without external organs. They were androgynous. And in the third race, which is the Lemur, um, then they started being hermaphrodite. That is uh, to say that, we, that they were male and female at the same time, but now with external sexual organs. That was the condition in which the sparks were, were living in the, during the third race. Now, at that point, uh, already, I mean, the sparks were already mature enough to practice shared sex. And that with the intention uh, for that humanity to have the opportunity to reach the level of God. Because they had already evolved to the point where they need to um, practice the shared sex. Uh, and to do so, the process of the separation of the genders or of sexes occurred and they stopped being male and female and humanity was there divided into or they would start being born not with both with both sexes but with one they then they they were girls and they they were boys right right and at that time they were known as adams and ifs that is the um the, the boys were the Adams and the, the girls were the Eves. And all this story in relation to the creation of men that are found in the different sacred texts or ancient texts, may be the Jews, may be the Sumerians, the Hindus, etc., they only symbolically represent this transcendental event, which defined actually humanity. Uh, we, that was the separation of sex into males and females or atoms and ifs and that with the purpose for the sparks to achieve self-realization mm, the female bodies at that point were already um, completely ready to start practicing sex with a partner which is totally necessary in order to create ourselves internally in order to make wise use of our sexual energy by um, sharing, by connecting ourselves with another earth of the opposite pole and make us send our energy through our spine. And what happens? Some, that's something very interesting. All the Lucifers accepted the challenge and they told the human beings that if they wanted to be like the gods, they would have to try that fruit. And the fruit was shared sex. And it is important to know that all of us have an inner Lucifer. We need to, well, in, in, in the previous lecture where we were talking about the duality, we were explaining the three forces of our consciousness in the Trinity. And we find there uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And the Son is the Lucifer, is a part of our consciousness, is the desire in us. That is what the Lucifer represents. And um, that serpent within us, um, that is the tempting one, which is our the, the desire that lives inside of us, if we practice sex, right? And if we make our sexual energy 
ascend or goes inwards and upwards, we are going to develop the Kundalini serpent and we are going to awaken our consciousness. But if we use sex, if we, um, let's say that manage by desire, we go to sex and we feel the sexual energy, then we are going to develop the um, inverted serpent, uh, which is the um, the one that uh, is awakened in evil. So the desire led us to want to actually taste that fruit that was sex, that was um, the forbidden fruit that was in the middle of the garden. Actually, the garden is the physical body of the person, and in the middle of the garden you find the sexual organs. So actually, in that uh, story, what they are talking about is sex, and that is the forbidden fruit. And uh, for this, to start making these uh, practices, uh, these sexual practices, which were absolutely uh, sacred sex practices, they entrusted certain gurus or masters to direct these sexual practices in uh, the temples. So all couples should go to the temple to practice sex on their honeymoon and that's for two purposes. The first of those purposes was the reproduction of the species which was done without uh, fornication, I mean without a need to spill uh, the semen or the sexual energy. Uh, but a single sperm was directed by their own uh, divine mother to fertilize that woman's egg. That was the first purpose for those sexual practices to take place. And the, se the second purpose was to create the superior existential bodies of the being, which are created by transmuting this sexual energy uh, when once connected, once sexually connected, uh, making their energy ascend through their spine. Uh, on to, to take it here to the upper um, centers, which is the, the heavens in us. And, uh, well, that is a sacred sexual practice and at that time that practice was only um let's say um they can only do that practice in the temples okay at that time and each spark should start working with the two trees the tree of life which was the tree of, of sex and the tree of good and evil which was the tree of the wisdom for the self-realization. Both trees are inside us. When we are talking about a tree, we are talking about a wisdom. When we talk about the tree of life, we are talking about the, you know, the Kabbalah, the tree of life, where we find our spine as the tree, and we find there the ten uh, sephirots, or the main parts of our being, and we develop that tree uh, with all the powers, with all the, the faculties that that tree, that, or the development of that tree can give us by practicing the supra sex, what we are uh, talking here about. And they had to start working also with the tree of good and evil, which is the, um, the tree of the wisdom for self-realization. But what happens? that wisdom or from where you get wisdom um, and well it is actually from the ego and the ego was not created yet and these two trees they have common roots or, or they, sh they share their roots with each other that means that one of those trees are um, like from the sexual organs and up through our spine and there we find the secrets of the sexual transmutation or the Arcanum A-Z-E-F, sorry, which is another name uh, in which esoterically this is known. Uh, because through the sex we can create ourselves. And the other um, tree is like uh, downwards and is developed with the fornication. When we expel the sexual energy and we 
create the ego in us. And from there is from where we can achieve wisdom. We can rescue wisdom from only from the study and the elimination of the ego that we previously create. And, um, well, it is said that at that time, the planet went through a very strong natural catastrophe and uh, it was that a comet known as Condor uh, crashed with the planet Earth. That is something that happens like, like, um, how can I say that in English? Sorry, I don't find the word. It's something that happens um, commonly, let's say. Um, let's say that several millions of years, it, it happens again. Something like that. I don't have the correct words in English, sorry. And as a result of this collision, the Earth crust uh, was uh, destabilized. And to stabilize it again, they sent a sacred delegation uh, led by um, the art physicists and the art chemists, Loises and Sakaki, that were like the beings in charge of doing that work, to come and solve the problem. And what happened that this sacred commission that came to resolve that situation, they uh, resolved to install something that was known as the conda buffer organs in each of the human beings. And that with the intention of stabilizing the earth crust. This conda buffer organ that was literally a tail uh, would fulfill the function of being like a transmitter of cosmic energy from the microcosm man to the planet. And it is like noteworthy that this experiment had been carried out on other planets in the universe and simultaneously allowed to um, stabilize the, 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 the earth crust and to establish the level of wisdom of each planet. That means that the longest this tail is on the human beings, the greatest ego that those human, be that those human beings can create. And um, at that time, it was determined that the degree of wisdom for this planet in which we live would be four. That is, that this is go it was going to be a planet of Christ or masters. That means that because of that, um, it, the, um, the, the sparks that self-realize in this planet can achieve those hierarchies, those levels. So uh, someone who self-realized here can become a master in the universe or a Christ, which is a high hierarchy. And due to this, the tail of the conda buffer was left three and a half days too long. Uh, but those are not 24 hours day, but like esoteric days that refers to levels of consciousness. In reality, that um, took a very long period of time, perhaps hundreds or thousands of years, in which the humanity of that race had this tail uh, with them that was esoterically three and a half days longer than uh, it was commonly mm, uh, the time, you know, that was like half a day. And that was referring to the level of consciousness that would be possible to reach on this planet. And with this, they would establish the level of evil for the tree of wisdom, since the tree of wisdom as I was saying, extends in us from the sex and downwards in that tail, okay? And uh, it happens that the tail of the conda buffer originated an astral sword or a lustful wave um, that imbalanced all human beings, leading them to feel like a lot of sexual desire and to feel the urge to practice the sex outside the temple they couldn't wait to go to the temple to practice sex and thanks to uh, this strong sexual desire they and without direction i mean practicing sex by themselves they reach fornication 
that is the um, spill the creative sex, the creative sex, the sorry, the creative sexual energy outside of the amphora, that is outside of their temples of themselves from uh, for the first time. Okay, and um, that is that they experience for the first time the orgasm and the ejaculation. And uh, well, as a result of this, we were expelled from paradise because what divinizes us is in our sexual creative energy. Our energy, our creative energy has the powers to make us God. But we need to keep that energy within us and make that energy ascend. So we like fill ourselves with that energy and we feed our consciousness with that energy. But when we, when we let that energy go out of the temple, we um, like make the virtues of our soul to fail and, as, uh, and to convert into the uh, seven causal selves uh, that are like the seeds of the ego or known as the seven deadly sins that are the sloth, the greed, the lust, the pride, the wrath, the gluttony, and the envy that you can find as that, as that dragon of seven heads. That is like the, the seeds of our ego. And that was created the first time that because of tasting that fruit, we um, uh, reach fornication and spill and, and we by... by uh, spilling that creative energy, that powerful creative energy, then we created uh, the ego in ourselves. And as I was saying, because of this, we were expelled from paradise. That is to say that we fail from the superior dimensions because, because paradise are the higher dimensions of nature. And that is where the race inhabited at that point. And we fail to this third dimension. And there, the secondary nature was created in the, in the inhabitants or the dwellers of this planet. And we can observe that until that moment, the sparks were completely innocent. They didn't know evil. Also, uh, the tail of the conda buffer was left for uh, as long as the sparks would reach as far as they had to go. Because remember that all of this, or this um, tale and this sexual desire was there to make the humans to go and create the ego, to go and um, experience all the opposite to the inner being, to fail. So they have, or, or they can find there the, um, let's say like the, the material, the raw material, when they get feel the urge to get to know themselves. And what happens is that because of this, humans became terrible perverts. They became hypnotized and fascinated by the things of the world, by the personality, by evil, to the point that they were no longer interested in self-realization. And some even began to commit suicide because there was like no longer a reason to exist. Um, and because of this, when they reached that point, the sacred commission returned to, um, to the planet to remove that conda buffer organ since it already achieved like its objectives. And the tail was physically removed from us at that point. That is why we have like that protuberance that you see at the end of the spine in the coccyx bone, uh, which is like the vestige of that tail that once we had physically. But the truth is that astrally, that tail remains in us. And um, we can actually go consciously out to the astral plane and we can find that we have that tail. And um, the more purpose that we uh, become when continue fornicating the the bigger or of this tail it like lengthen and thicken when we continue fornicating 
And that is why we see that demons are always represented with a tail, because actually it is talking about this. And as I was saying, you can go to the astral plane consciously and you can verify by yourself that you have a tail. And as a result of this, the planet Earth remained in the most absolute materialism human beings got used to fornicating. They became fascinated with the pleasure uh, that reaching orgasm and ejaculation gave them. And the reality is that so far, humanity preferred to live like animals rather to do the conscious work to self-realize because they got fascinated with the pleasure uh, and with the ego that they just created and uh, that collective fornication that collective spilling of the inner waters was called the great plot so that is another symbolism that is actually representing this uh, and because of this, the human mind became animal by desire. And all the created selves, um, since the seven causal selves, uh, as people continue fornicating, they multiplied into hundreds and thousands of details. They were taken in pairs to Noah's Ark, which is actually representing our seminal envelope. And um, when they talk about the, all the animals were taken in pairs to the arts, it is because all of our selves, all of our psychological eyes, they are in us like in pairs because all of our selves are dual. They have their positive pole and their negative pole. And hence, we need to draw the wisdom of both poles, of the good and uh, the evil and this was done so that the day that we decide to regenerate ourselves we find the raw material to work on ourselves there in our seminal envelope in our creative sexual energy or the creative energy of the holy spirit uh, where all of our ego is like there trapped the egos are represented internally as animals and from that work from that work of eliminating all of those selves, uh, we'll come or we will rescue the love or the fire and the wisdom or light when we learn to die in ourselves, when we, lay, when we learn to practice a psychological death. And that is why it is very important to uh, or hear the importance of receiving this knowledge and working with the three factors for the revolution of the consciousness uh, so that through psychological death we start self-observing ourselves um, making ourselves aware that we have all those selves in our interior and start eliminating them um, by asking every time that we discover by self-observing any of these details of the ego even in its uh, positive pole or it's negative pole, whatever you find that um, a, a, a defect is a defect is manifesting in you. There, you ask your divine mother to eliminate it. That way, you are rescuing the essence that is trapped in the ego. Ninety-seven percent of our essence is trapped there. And when you start practicing the supra sex, which is return, stop fornicating, stop spilling the sexual energy through orgasm and ejaculation and having a sexual partner to practice that sacred um, sex, which is the, the sex in which you join sexually to, with your partner and you make that energy ascend through your spine. And that way you are going to start um, building the existential bodies of your being. And that way you're going to be developing this. The, the tree of life which is also known as the Christmas tree and there you're going to develop all of the virtues all of the powers all of the faculties the forces etc that are represented on all, in all the decorations and the lights and even the gifts that we find in the Christmas tree and from there the birth of our individual Christ will take place from that work that we do 
on the development of our Christmas tree, okay, which is our spine fill, filled with all of our creative sexual energy. And remember that the Christ is a force of our consciousness, okay, it's not a person. And um, we must understand this, that if the exile from the paradise was given by sex or the or because of the bad use of our sexual capacity and say the return to paradise must also be made by sex that is why we need to learn to practice the supra sex and that is why it is very important that we start working to achieve chastity by eliminating all of the defects of lust in us that are all the time leading us to which orgasm and ejaculation to spill God from us, which is the sexual creative energy. If we don't learn to practice super sex, there will be no regeneration possible. In sex is the possibility of being of each human being, um, because in sex is or lies the possibility of achieving the second birth. That is why we need to start understanding the need to stop fornicating to stop spilling our uh, internal waters so that this great uh, flood ceases within us. And then the sacred fire of the Kundalini can be lit within us. Um, now, we need, by reflecting on this, because this is something to stop and reflect and to also to investigate astrally, because here you are receiving just a theory, you are receiving just a concept. And if, for example, before you believed in, I don't know, the Christian concepts or the Hindu concepts or, uh, I don't know, the Muslim concepts, okay, and now you listen to this and you receive it as another concept, then you can, for example, believe in it and uh, stop believing in the other concept and start believing on this. You are in the same thing. You are just believing. Or you can not believe in this and continue believing on another concept or not believing in anything at all. You are in the same thing. You are at the point of the believer. So the important thing here is that we investigate this, that we corroborate this information. That is why from the very beginning of this course, we are teaching um, the practices, for example, of astral projection. So we can consciously unfold yourself to the astral plane, contact with your inner divinity there in the astral plane, and corroborate all of this information, okay? So that you get to like understand that you have a need to work on yourself. You need, you have, um, that we are all, because we are all degenerated, and that we need to make a work on ourselves to regenerate ourselves, okay? And the first step to start this process of regeneration is understanding the hypnotism in which we find ourselves. With all the things of the personality, with all the things in this physical world, because that is what doesn't allow us to value or to have a true objective of existing. Uh, we are just pursuing subjective things, things that are going to be swallowed by time. And we need to start understanding if we really want to regenerate ourselves, if we really want to achieve the purpose of our existence, which is to become gods. We need to understand the illusion in which we find ourselves. All of these passing things of the material world and um, if we do so we are going to start like seeing how important it is to start working on our inner world and uh, as you do so you start practicing the three factors for consciousness revolution to start a process of uh, regeneration now there is a second thing that is important that we all understand and it is that there are only two types of marriage or of matrimony. First are those that are done are, are for the purpose of fornication, which are like all of them, basically. Because all human beings on this planet go to sex seeking only pleasure and fun, you know, 
like this animal enjoyment without any transcendental desires that and we need to understand that if we continue going to sex uh, or to uh, if, you, if we continue spilling our sexual energy we will never be able to regenerate ourselves we will never be able to awaken for real our consciousness and we will never be able to develop the internal bodies that will make us have presence in the different dimensions of nature. We are going to remain fallen, okay? And we need to know that there are that there is a second type of marriage, which are the ones who, um, I mean, where the couple agrees with their Holy Spirit to never fornicate. And that's in order to be able to self-realize our being. That is that you, those marriage, those matrimonies are the ones that are going to sex all the time, but now to practice this sacred uh, sexual practice, to, to unite sexually, but not to steal the sexual energy, but to make it ascend through their spine to... Uh, fill themselves and feed their soul, their spirit, with this sexual energy. We have uh, talked in the different lectures about the supersexuality. We explained that in the first lecture of the phase A, we explained that practice in the lecture number 10, where we, are where we were talking about the, ex the, um, the seven bodies. And uh, we explained this in the lecture number 17 of the self-knowledge course and all of those lectures we can find you can find here in in the video sections because they are all recorded okay and if we practice this type of sex if we if, um, yeah start uh, practicing the supersexuality that process of regeneration will begin in us that uh regeneration is to regain the lost power to begin to live the process that we saw in the previous lecture when we were talking about the quinary. That is the process of the genesis where we become true men, where we recover all the power and we regenerate our seed. And we are going to work on the tree of life uh, and fire and water must always go inwards and upwards and that ascending fire that is going to be lit in us as we practice the super sex is what is called the Kundalini, okay? And when the fire is lit in us, the entire Black Lodge comes over to tempt us. So we are going to all the time be like um, defeating desire, refusing our, our, our own desires. So we need to, uh, when practicing this, be very careful not to fall again into fornication, not to fall into adultery, because if you do so, everything would be lost. But there is something else. If the person continues to fornicate, uh, for each fornication, he is going to lose the work that he is doing. And if we are going to see that someone who wants to raise 33 vertebrae of energy through their spine by seven bodies, uh, it is a long job and it, uh, it costs a lot, right? Uh, and approximately 24 sexual practices are needed to raise uh, two vertebrae. And you lose them in only one sexual fall. That is why it is very important to uh, practice sex, sex, sorry, with love, fidelity, and chastity. So that is very important. And... Um, just to end today's lecture, we must take this into account. The most important thing uh, is to understand this. The reproduction of the beast in us, which is the ego, is done through fornication, through adultery, and th through lack of love. When any of this occur, we work to conquer the abyss. If the ego is going to end, if we really understand this and we really want to eliminate our ego, we need, we, we need to stop creating more ego. And if we don't stop creating selves, the, continue, the, the ego will continue 
to grow. So here you see the need to initiate a serious work against fornication because uh, every time that you feel your sexual energy, every time that you reach orgasm and ejaculation, you are creating more and more ego. We have to know that when a person receives this knowledge, this that we are talking here simply in a, in a video, in a, in, a, in a social platform, actually when someone receives this knowledge, he has to decide because already knowing about the power of the sexual energy, now the definition will be angel or demon. There is no more. If knowing the power imposed in sexual energy, we decide to stop spilling our sexual energy and begin to make it ascend through our spine, through the sexual union with our partner in fidelity, chastity, and love, um, we will become angels. And later on, gods, all the angels and gods and the different of the different hierarchies in the universe exist because they were born in sex. That is a reality. But if on the contrary, knowing the power and value of the sexual energy, we continue to pull it out, not to abandon the pleasure, the animal pleasure of orgasm and ejaculation, then we will continue to become more and more perverse uh, sleep in our consciousness more and more and we will end up becoming real demons that is a reality these are the only two alternatives either you go one way or the other <laughs> knowledge has always uh, been a great responsibility once we have the knowledge we like act awake consciously and well people this lecture um, being the last can be like very strong and even complex to understand, I know. But the invitation is for us to reflect on it, to ask our own inner being to direct us, to give us light, clarity about the path that lead us to self-realization. And um, that make us understand if in reality, this internal path is found in the wise use of sex. And remember, you have meditation, astral, unfolding, reflection, etc. And the invitation that we always give is to practice, to check, to investigate, for you to reach your own inner knowledge. And, well, people, this has been today's topic. Thank you very much to all of you who have um, been here during the course. Uh, all the lectures remain recorded here on the page, on the channel, in case you want to consult them at any time. And remember that we are here all the time available through the messenger to resolve any concern that you may have, okay? And well, that is uh, all for today. Thank you very much to all of you. And I wish you much encouragement and much strength in your inner work, okay? So thank you, thank you very much. Bye-bye.